Waste is one of the primary burdens to the environment. In the U.S., metals, paper, food, glass, and plastics comprise approximately 69% of the total amount of municipal solid waste. Furthermore, all the mentioned products can be recycled, which not only reduces the need for virgin metals, but also reduces landfills. In addition to the solid waste, electronic waste, or e-waste, is a major problem in today's world, as the disposal of these materials can cause more harm to the environment. Because handling electronic waste requires different procedures, this prerequisite aims to reduce the waste that is generated by the building occupants, while the waste produced during the construction phase will be addressed by the Construction and Demolition Waste Management Planning Prerequisite. This prerequisite forces the project teams to have spaces dedicated to the collection and storage of recyclables, at least for mixed paper, corrugated cardboard, glass, plastics, and metals, which can be accessed by waste haulers and building occupants in the entire building. Such projects should also be able to have an infrastructure in place to collect, store, and dispose of at least two of the following. Batteries, lamps containing mercury, and electronic waste. Note that these materials are not considered recyclable items under this prerequisite, as they will only be collected, stored, and disposed. For LEED BD plus C retail projects, the prerequisite requirements are completely different. Retail projects must conduct a waste stream to determine the project's top five recyclable waste streams by weight or volume using consistent metrics. And according to the waste stream analysis, projects should list at least the top four waste streams and provide collection and storage areas for handling them. Let's take a closer look at the prerequisite. Prerequisite intent. To reduce the waste that is generated by building occupants and hauled to and disposed of in landfills. Prerequisite requirements. For all the LEED BD plus C rating systems except retail, projects should provide dedicated areas that can be accessible by the waste haulers and building occupants for the collection and storage of recyclable materials for the entire building. Collection and storage areas can be located separately as well. Recyclable materials must include mixed paper, corrugated cardboard, glass, plastics, and metals. Additionally, necessary actions need to be taken for the safe collection, storage, and disposal of two of the following. Batteries, mercury-containing lamps, and electronic waste. Retail projects should conduct a waste stream analysis and identify the project's top five recyclable waste streams by weight or volume using consistent metrics throughout. The waste stream analysis period should be a minimum of 24 hours. If the project team cannot find any information regarding the waste streams, data from similar operations can be used as well to make projections or retailers with other stores in similar size and function can use their historical data from their other stores. Once the waste stream study is completed, projects should list the top four recyclable waste streams and provide dedicated areas for separation, collection, and storage of the recyclables, which are also accessible to waste haulers and building occupants. If the project identifies batteries, lamps containing mercury, or electronic waste as one of the four waste streams, all the necessary measures should also be taken for the safe collection, storage, and disposal, but not recycling. For all projects, even if there isn't any recycling program available in the project's location, projects should still have dedicated storage for any future services, and dedicated areas should always be accessible by the building occupants, visitors, and waste haulers. For the LEED BD plus C core and shell projects, the project team can estimate the tenant's recycling needs based on historical data and should consider incorporating the recycling policy of the building into the tenant guidelines. For documentation, all projects, including retail, should document a description of the recycling storage and collection strategies, 
submit a verification of the recycled material types, and submit floor plans showing the recycling collection and storage areas. Retail projects should additionally document their methodology and results of their waste stream study. And let's take a look at the key things to remember for this prerequisite. 1. Batteries, mercury-containing lamps, and electronic waste are not recyclable materials in LEED, and thus classified as hazardous materials. They will only be collected, stored, and disposed. 2. By this prerequisite, Every LEED BD plus C project, except retail, should recycle at least mixed paper, corrugated cardboard, glass, plastics, and metals. 3. This prerequisite is only for the building operations phase and not for the construction phase. The next credit will only be available for the construction phase and not for the building operations phase. And 4. Retail projects should consider a waste stream analysis and identify the project's top five recyclable waste streams by weight or volume using consistent metrics throughout. Next, the projects should list the top four recyclable waste streams and provide dedicated areas for separation, collection, and storage of the recyclables, which are also accessible to waste haulers and building occupants.